A new feature was added to the Lower Bee Branch Creek in the summer of 2017. Visitors to the area will see some islands in the stretch of water from the 16th Street Bridge down into the 16th Street Detention Basin. In this program, we'll hear from the people who designed, built, and installed these islands and learn about the various functions they serve. These are the Bee Branch Floating Islands. Floating islands are man-made wetlands that serve two big purposes. One, they help clean the water, and two, they create diverse habitat. The islands are actually proprietary technology, and we make them out of recycled PET, so recycled drinking bottles. They are non-toxic to fish, they're safe, and um, it provides a way to create a floating raft. This floating raft will have plants on it, and the plants will actually grow down through three layers, the hole. The plant roots have to push through the bottom layers, so they're four-layer islands. This provides wonderful habitat, both above, in the middle, and below the surface. So above, you can plant pollinator plants for the bees, the birds, um, different insects, as well as the turtles and the um, uh, different types of uh, animals that will be on top of the island. Inside the island, you have small macroinvertebrates and microorganisms that are the beginning of the food chain. And below the water line, it's a wonderful place for fish that will be feeding off the roots. The roots will actually grow down two to three feet under the islands, and that's important to the technology because those roots are doing multiple things. First, they're slowing the movement of water, which helps reduce the uh, suspended uh, solids in the water. Two, they provide a wonderful attachment point for the microbes and the bacteria to grow on. That helps break down the pollutants as well as provide a place for the fish to graze. So you're creating a floating supermarket as the fish are feeding off of the microorganisms and you're seeing the beginning of the food web really there. The islands are then anchored to go up and down. And the reason that's important in a place where you have storm water coming and raising and lowering the level, it prevents the plants from flooding out or drying out because the, the um, islands will float up and down to adjust to the changing water level. They are planted with a number of different types of native plants, which is important because they will not need to be pulled out in the winter. We leave the islands out in these locations all year long, and the plants will come back in the spring looking great. It is several years for the plants to grow up to full maturity, and we generally assume about a year before the plants are at really fully at their uh, full power in terms of cleaning the water but they will start within two weeks. You will actually see uh, improvements in um, the way that the microbes are assembling on the bottom of the island. The microbes and bacteria are actually caught under the island and on the roots in something called biofilm. So biofilm is that sticky green stuff that you see forming on, sometimes on things in the water. That sticky green stuff, that biofilm, is critical to this technology because that's where your microbes are gonna colonize. Now there are microbes in water. This water has microbes in it, but they're inefficient. They're not really doing much. By putting them in the island, it allows them to colonize and more effectively break down the pollutants. So what types of things are we trying to clean? We're trying to reduce nitrogen, reduce phosphorus, um, reduce total suspended solids, in some cases, reduce um, different types of heavy metals. So the plants are a wonderful way to use nature to improve the water quality instead of short-term fixes from chemicals. What we're doing here is really cre creating a floating ecosystem. Hi, I'm Abby Moyleen. I'm from Ken Psyche Design in Madison, Wisconsin, and we are the landscape architects on the project. Uh, we designed these floating islands. Uh, the design concept was uh, to mimic the islands of the Mississippi. And so we just um, sort of made that more loose and organic and came up with these sort of kidney bean shaped islands that are rather long and skinny. So they're very much like archipelagos you'd see on the Mississippi. And we selected all, all of the plants for the project. We used all native species, mostly forbs, because we really wanted to promote insect habitat. And um, we really wanted them to be full of flowers and a nice show of color and se seasonal interest th throughout the growing season. So we used sweet flag, swamp milkweed, New England aster, common bone set, sp spotted joe pie weed, swamp rose mallow, 
southern blue flag iris, cardinal flower, great blue lobelia, monkey flower, obedient plant, cup plant, blue vervain, and ironweed, just to name a few. And all of the islands are a little bit different. You won't see every single species on every single island, but throughout all 14 islands, you will likely see at least one of those species. And then we also used a few ornamental grasses and sedges and rushes to fill it in and make it look full and green throughout the season. We also added driftwood to the islands so that they, um, so that when turtles and frogs would come up on the islands, they would have a clear place to land and sun and be a little bit protected from uh, anybody who might be trying to snatch them up. <laughs> Question I often get is how heavy are the islands? So islands uh, are surprisingly heavy once they're in, a wa in the water. So for example, if we take a 100 square foot island, 10 by 10, that would typically weigh a little over 200 pounds. Within a year that will double in weight because of all the organisms that are living inside the island. And that doubling in weight is the dry weight without the water. That's how much is living in an island and that's so critical for the food web. The islands will continue to gain weight over time as more and more lives in the island and you get um, some accumulated debris on top of the island um, and we recommend that you know maybe every five years we go through and clean up the top of the island, reduce some of the weight and remove some of the plant material that's accumulated there. So the idea of the floating islands came about uh, as we were designing the, the what we consider the lower bee branch or the downstream portion of the bee branch creek. Um, while we were doing the project primarily for flood control, our in order to open the door for the use of the uh, low interest state revolving loan fund, uh, water quality became uh, you know, a pretty big issue for, for using that money. It's, uh, the origin is th from the United States Environmental Protection Agency and so it's for you know, water quality, cleaning up uh, and maintaining the, the nation's waters. And so the Lower Bee Branch uh, the, um, you know, from around 16th Street and Sycamore Street Bridge and, that, and that, through that area can be really thought of as a, as a treatment system for stormwater. So as it comes out of the, under the railroad tracks near Garfield towards 16th Street, that can be thought of as like a, a large sediment bay area where larger, a coarser sediment would fall out into the bottom of the creek. Um, and then as the water flows underneath 16th Street, um, the water can slow down. And what we have there is a floating island strategically placed so that uh, it'll further slow down this, uh, you know, daily flow that passes down the creek. Uh, it it uh, slows that water down even more so the finer sediment can settle out. And the, the important part about that is that phosphorus, which is a, you know, a key nutrient, um, one of the harder ones to control and treat, uh, and one of the nutrients that's really causing issues down at the, uh, um, in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and, the, uh, and so by trapping and keeping that sediment and having it drop out along with that phosphorus in that section of the creek that goes a long way towards improving the water quality then as it reaches the Mississippi River and then on down on down the Mississippi so that's kind of where they came about part of that treatment train part of that process to improve the water quality of the Bee Branch Creek uh, and I mentioned the funding um, so uh, we there are kind of two funding sources that are used in, you know, for the, for the uh, uh, island. And when we talk about these floating islands, or sometimes they refer to as uh, uh, floating wetland systems, floating island treatment systems, however you want to uh, phrase it, um, for us, they, they serve you know, three primary purposes. One is the water quality that I just talked about. The second one is this, it adds something uh, nuanced and aesthetic uh, addition to, to, the, to the Bee Branch Creek. And that's what interested the, uh, the Vision Iowa uh, board when they uh, awarded the city a $2.25 million uh, Vision Iowa grant. It's called the River Enhancement Community Attraction and Tourism Grant, or RECAT for short. And what that does is it, it, they help fund, enhance projects that will help draw people to uh, to the region, to eastern Iowa, and so they helped funded um, our Bee Branch Creek and many of the amenities like the floating island, and so uh, the floating island was part of that grant agreement that we were going to build those as part of our project. 
So that's part of the funding source. And then the other part is the uh, SRF program um, that we use to fund not only the floating islands, but also just the lower Bee Branch and actually the upper Bee Branch Creek. So one question I've had before is, do we have to cut down the plants every year because they have phosphorus in them? The answer is no. Because surprisingly, the amount of phosphorus that is removed by the plants is less than you'd think. Studies have shown only five to seven percent of the phosphorus is actually in the plants that they've pulled up. So the majority of the cleaning is actually going on inside and under the water. So you don't need to go in every year and clean off the plants off the top of your island unless you want to for aesthetic reasons. But you're, um, over time, the weight will grow. So at some point after five years, you may want to cut down the plants and remove some of the accumulated leaves from the fall. But it's not a requirement for the technology. My name is Ryan Hannon. I'm with NCAMP Inc. out of DeKalb, Illinois. And I was the installation project manager for the Lower Bee Branch Floating Islands project. Um, my responsibility was to coordinate all the materials, install them, and then put the islands where they're at now. The uh, process was pretty straightforward. Uh, the folks at Midwest Floating Islands constructed the islands and then it was handed off to us where we installed them with uh, native plug species to this area. From there we put the goose enclosures around the side so the goose don't eat them up. And then it was uh, off to anchoring and there's three or four different size islands with the smallest one being 68 square feet and the largest one being close to 300 square feet. Each island has a different set amount of weights and uh, we use 200 pound anchors, the smallest one having 600 pounds and the largest one having close to 2,000 pounds of anchor weight. Uh, it's been a great project to work on and I'd like to thank the Midwest Floating Islands for one, for all your help. Um, can't wait to work with them again in the city of Dubuque. We thank you and uh, hope to work with you again soon too. We recommend that the islands be planted with native plants. In fact, there are holes every eight inches. And we recommend that these plants be, uh, be friendly for pollinators. So what that means is uh, that the bees, the butterflies, and the insects that are important for pollinating plants are attracted to the islands. Particularly important for species like the bees and the monarch butterfly that are having declining habitat, we want to restore that habitat. Like we are restoring the wetlands. There's been a tremendous amount of loss of wetlands in the Midwest over the last hundred years, and those wetlands played a really vital role in that they help clean the water as well as provide important habitat. We're restoring that with these islands to create the floating ecosystems. So these islands are actually made from recycled water bottles. Uh, in fact, this project will save 67,000 bottles from going into a landfill. And the wonderful symmetry is that it puts those bottles into a productive way to actually clean the water. These islands are actually worldwide. Uh, there's a lot of islands in New Zealand. In fact, over half our research is actually done in New Zealand on the Biohaven floating islands. They're in China. They're in England where they help with the fly zone of birds uh, from Africa north. Uh, they are found in Sweden. And most recently, a number of islands were just put into Ecuador. Uh, they're in California. There's actually an acre size in California. Obviously, around um, the, down in Louisiana, they're used to restore the marshlands there after the BP oil spill. And now there's this wonderful project here in Bee Branch, which the city should be very proud of. Um, this is a great innovative technique, and it's one of the many tools that the city's using to improve this area, and it looks wonderful.